Woo! Let's go, man. Man, setting up for the new Fortnite studio. So excited, man. Take this, brother. Bunch of Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. You know what time it is, right? It is time for season five. It is finally upon us yet again, and we've entered the cycle of trying to reach champs. I hope you guys are so excited, man, because the possibilities are just endless, honestly. And, and with that being the case, you already know what's going on here, right? We're coming back at you with a brand new guide on how you can start dominating arena, you know, in this brand new Fortnite season. Brand new season, brand new possibilities, own it. Make it your own, guys, you can do it. And before we hop into our arena guide, or if you're looking for more, like even more of the most helpful and up-to-date tips and, and content to improve at Fortnite, look no further than ProGuides.com, where you're gonna find a ton of amazing guides and courses 24 seven on-demand coaching from pros and our brand new course with the legend himself, Clicks. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this going. Starting off with the early game, all right, obviously the map has undergone some major changes to say the least. Tons of new landing spots like Salty Towers, Stealthy Stronghold, Hunter's Haven, and Colossal Coliseum have all been introduced to the game, and it's really gonna be important at this point in the season that you find your landing spot and really just get like a good general feel for the massive changes that have been made to the map. Arguably the most hype landing spot addition, Salty Towers features aspects of the previous chapter one, point of interest, tilted towers, alongside some remaining Salty Springs houses. Okay, so if you're looking to reach champs as quickly as possible, although it might be tempting to visit these new POIs, it is best you guys avoid them in arena game modes, all right? Every time Epic Games makes changes to the map, we consistently see a large quantity of players flood the new POIs and landing spot additions just out of pure curiosity. As a result of the new POIs being saturated with players, right, and it's just significantly harder to get out of spawn, making it less likely you're gonna make it deeper into games. Allowing yourself really to rack up placement Points, right? With the total placement points for arena game modes being 180 every game and kills ranging from 10 to 20 points per kill depending on whether you are playing solo or duo arena. It's even more apparent just how important securing these placement points are if you're looking to get to Champions League fast. Apart from finding a good spot, getting good at fighting an early game is gonna be another crucial practice method. Similar to past seasons, all right, fighting an early game is still a solid strategy and it's a great way to set yourself up for the rest of the game. In terms of practicing early game, okay, you can do it by simply playing a tournament or arena match and just fighting with confidence, practicing realistic 1v1s and creative, and just generally practicing your mechanics through things like aim maps, edit courses, and simply free building and grinding out of 1v1 ones against other mechanical players. But overall guys, one of the biggest factors for your early game is gonna be finding a solid landing spot especially with all the new changes that's happened, right? Overall, like what we recommend doing is just simply hopping into some games and just figuring out which spots that you generally like landing at. From there, you can just simply just head to the website fortnite.gg and devise a loot route, which you can just use to loot the spot effectively and just set yourself up for a solid early game. And while we're on the topic of finding a landing spot, if you're struggling to find a spot or just to sort out a loot route, feel free to go talk to one of our pro coaches over on proguys.com who can guide you through the process and help you find the perfect early game spot. All right, so moving on to the mid game. This season is a fair bit different because of not only the various map changes, but also the weapon and meta changes as well. Now, your play style here is really gonna depend on how confident you are with the new meta, weapons, and your general skill. With the chapter two season five update comes a boatload of weapon and meta changes. In terms of weapon meta, all right, there were some drastic changes here. Like first for the vaulted weapons. Okay, so in chapter two, season four, there were a handful of weapon vaults with the most significant vaults being the scoped AR, combat shotguns, and pumps were a staple in the loot pool. Alongside the weapon vaults, the fire trap was also vaulted. On the other hand, there were a ton of weapon unvaultings, which will surely make this season's loot pool very versatile. These unvaulted items include the tack shotgun, charge shotgun, double barrel shotgun, and the SMG. All right, so what do you guys think of this loot pool? Is it better than season four? Let me know in the comments down below. Alongside of these weapon changes, all right, there is a new form of movement that has been, you know, never featured in Fortnite before. 
These crystal light consumables allow you to teleport forward when you double tap your jump bind. These crystals are essential for rotating. They can be found in the middle of the map and make it extremely hard for opponents to tag you up while rotating. Let me just say this, I strongly suggest that you use them, all right? This meta is drastically different than chapter two, season four in all aspects. Like if you're wanting to get to champs as quickly as possible, you gotta be analytical of your playstyle and just work to master this current meta as soon as possible. For the majority of us, the most optimal playstyle is gonna be playing edge zone, preferably on the dead side, and just grabbing placement points, then fragging out an end game just like we would during any other season. So if you're not familiar with the dead side of the zone, essentially it's just the opposite of the side everybody's rotating into. So with that in mind, playing the dead side of zone is one of the most consistent ways to rack up those placement points and really just start to rank up as well. If you've gotten good practice with the new meta and you feel confident pushing for kills, then we do recommend playing a passive aggressive playstyle. Don't just W key everybody that you see like a complete psycho, <laughs> but also don't be afraid to play aggressive when you got to. So some of the biggest things that are gonna really help you in mid game are not only practicing you know, in realistic 1v1s and getting good at fighting, but also specifically practicing with the new items introduced to the game and just really, really getting good with them. And with that, like simply grinding arena like previous seasons and grinding out fights is gonna be one of the simplest yet most effective ways to improve your fighting. It's gonna improve your rotations and general game sense. It's really gonna help you in this new season. Finally, okay, I know a lot of us don't like to hear it, but with the increasing skill ceiling in Fortnite, VOD reviewing guys is also gonna be an incredible tool, all right? I say this all the time, but taking 15 minutes once in a while to review your gameplay and really look for areas to improve is really gonna make a huge difference. And if you don't wanna do it on your own, don't worry about it. You can always feel free to use our VOD review system over on ProGuys.com, as well as getting guidance from a pro. All right, guys, moving into the end game. Woo, this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is the stage of the game in Fortnite that's really, really changed the least going into the new season. And it really tends to go that way most seasons regardless, right? The meta still consists of utilizing your mobility items like shock waves and going for impact frags and staying ahead of the zone. Using your mobility is pretty self-explanatory. Carrying your mobility, you know, in, in game, you know, is always important if you manage to hold on to it until this stage in the game. There's really, really no better time to use it. All right, guys, so when it comes to impact fragging, we recommend looking for impact frags pretty much the entirety of the game and really just targeting them specifically when your materials are low or you need to get a kill for any other reason. And finally, as a general strategy, it's best to stay ahead of the zone in end game and preferably look back toward players struggling to get in. This definitely has been, you know, the meta for a long time in competitive, and you can really just start stacking up kills in arena games doing this as most players aren't really super experienced in endgame. In fact, you can honestly grab the majority of your overall kills in endgame by simply using your mobility at the right times, you know, going for impact frags when you're in a rough situation and, and simply just staying ahead of zone, you know, to look back for kills whenever you're in a more safe situation. Endgame really doesn't have to be insanely complicated, and using these three tips, like alongside practicing your fighting and tunneling, should definitely help you guys quite a bit when it comes to gaining points and doing so on a consistent basis. All right, guys, so with that being said, Yo, we gotta wrap it up for our guide to early, mid, and end game in arena. Hopefully this video really helps you out and really just help you dominate arena in this season. So we gotta do a recap, you guys ready? First off, in early game, a ton of map changes have obviously been implemented. So your first step, as with any season that really involves major, major map changes, should be to find and learn a new landing spot. Like, you gotta do that. Along with preferably like learning a loot route as well to even be more efficient. So, you know, take the time to practice early game. Take the time to really practice early game fights, you know, through realistic tournaments and arena, right? And finally, don't forget to use the website, fortnite.gg, to help you out with your loot route. Moving into the mid game, the most optimal play style for gaining points is definitely gonna be playing the dead side of zone and only taking fights when there is a clear benefit. Another tip that we mentioned here, and I mean like right here, was to use the new items like the double barrel shotgun as often as possible so you guys can adapt and just really get good with them before anybody else. And then it's really gonna help you just stay ahead of the meta and perform better as a result. 
And finally, while end games are pretty difficult, you know, they're pretty difficult mechanically, there are three things that you can do in Arena to maximize your potential in them. And, you know, even grab a bunch of kills while you're at it. So you gotta use your mobility effectively, all right? Go for impact frags, guys. Especially before you get into, you know, a really horrible situation. And constantly, you know, just get ahead of zone to grab kills on players struggling to get in. Use these tips, and I'm telling you, man, it's gonna be a major advantage for you in endgame. With that being said, bunch of crunch army. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video for our season five arena guide. Hopefully these tips and strategies are really gonna help you guys reach champs quickly and really improve at the game. You can do it, man. I believe in you guys. Let us know down, you know, in the comments, you know, how many points you have so far in the season because I'm really curious to hear how arena has been treating you so far. And once again, bunch of crunch army, man, check out our brand new course with clicks over on proguys.com where he discusses adapting to the you know, his favorite practice methods for tournaments, end game tips, and so much more. Be sure to go and sign up so you do not miss out. I'll see you again next time. Keep grinding.